Do S&P earnings estimates mean anything right now? I, I really think there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. You can't, re, you know, the economic impact of what we're seeing from the coronavirus, I, I think it's pretty difficult. I think a, a lot of uh, traders have gone to and investors have gone to defensive positions uh, more, you know, off of technicals. Uh, trying to get that E, I think, is pretty difficult right now. Yeah. Well, I ask because we're a few weeks from pricing in Q1, right? Sure. It's Mike Santoli. And yeah. uh, I mean, we want to we want to know if we're going to reset revenue rates. Yes. At what level? You want to know the baseline rate. I mean, it, it's very difficult to say what we're running at at the moment. Um, what you can say is we started from a pretty elevated valuation. I don't think you've reached a point where you've kind of generated true absolute value based on a grim scenario. Because there was so much cream at the top. Right. You were 19, sure. 19 times or so. Um, I mean, I think right now it's all a matter of figuring out. The market is getting in the direction of pricing in perhaps a technical recession or some kind of prolonged stall for the economy. Doubt that the, we're, we're at the point where we can actually say we priced in a significant decline in earnings at this point. But it, the market has uh, an interesting and, and a little bit curious tendency to go down almost 20 percent in one of these bouts, 19 point something percent. If you don't get a recession, it happened in late 2018. It's happened in 1998. It happened in the early yeah. in 89 and 90. I mean, it's kind of interesting because that's going to be a little bit of a, of right. a fail safe. The, the multiple is a complete toss up yeah. right now. We have no idea yeah. whether the right multiple is 17 or 16. If you're having a global economic decline, the overall multiple should be lower, even on an average level. Forget about 17. We should be closer to 15 on a four basis but we don't know what the e is so that's why you're getting thousand point swings what is the e nobody knows right now and that's why we just have to go through this discovery process yeah and of course everybody's trying to glean what this is going to mean uh, in terms of an economic impact as well steve leesman and i just sort of want to get your gauge of the pros versus the cons right now at least from a, a u.s economy perspective i get there's all this uncertainty people are, are you know there's crackdowns on traveling you know people stockpiling worried about, um, you know, going out, spending money potentially. But on the other side of the ledger, you do have gas prices that are going to continue to get lower. We still have this incredibly, at least based on the most recent data, strong job market. And you do have these low rates. And what we know is already shaping up to be a big surge in things like refinancings. I think that's going to be a help, re refinancing. There's going to be a, a, every every tick down in the 10-year or the 30-year uh, puts more mortgages in a place where it would be profitable for people to go and refinance if, I guess, in this market they can actually get a mortgage broker on the phone. Uh, that would be one aspect of it. Low gas prices in this environment today, Morgan, cut two ways, and I mean deeply in two ways. You're right on the one hand mm. that consumers will do much better. But if you'll notice, over the course of time, we put the economy of Saudi Arabia inside the United States with 12 million barrels a day of production. It won't be a painless process by which that readjusts to $30, $30 oil. There will be parts of this country that will feel a depression because of $30 oil. Uh, North Dakota is one of them. Parts of Texas would be another. Uh, there are places that have been boom towns because of the oil uh, explosion in this country, uh, and, and, and that could perhaps go away. There's high yield debt in the oil market. That's something to watch. Um, on the other hand, uh, you have the possibility that some businesses that do well when people stay at home could do better. Uh, it's, it's hard to find the, all of the pros on this, especially with the market coming down the way it is, because that's going to be a wealth extraction from the economy. I think the best thing you could say about that, Morgan, is we went into this at a reasonable rate of growth, around 2 percent. We had a low unemployment rate. There's going to need to be some form of adjustment here, but it'll be an adjustment from a, a decent level, uh, much better than Europe had going into this problem. As you're talking, Steve, uh, New York State Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo uh, with the press conference saying a couple of things. One is interesting. Some of these policies are going to get institutionalized. If a school uh, has a student that, who tests positive, uh, that school will close for 24 hours. Also, a new policy of manufacturing their own hand sanitizer for schools, MTA, uh, government agencies. It's simply easier to produce than it is to purchase at this point. Uh, Papasani, that's the kind of thing on a state level. By the way, at the same time, Washington Post uh, saying that the president will meet with Mnuchin today to talk about this list of potential policy ideas. You know, I can't figure out whether that's brilliantly innovative. It makes a lot of sense if they can actually do it. I'm surprised that 
they can actually pull that off, that they're able to actually produce that on the mass level and turn it around quickly enough, I would think there'd be enough stockpiles of existing uh, you know, I think you can go on YouTube. They'll tell you how to make it. With yeah. that old stuff. <laughs> he, he also he, uh, Cuomo also points out that the executive director of the New York, New Jersey Port Authority, Rick Cotton, has tested positive hmm. for the virus. Of course, that comes a day after Ted Cruz put himself in quarantine, which, which brings up an issue, I think, for the markets, which is coming into the weekend. Uh, I think that one of the big question was, have we stress tested the market and under its current levels and valuation and sentiment? for these inevitable headlines, for the inevitable barrage of more and more and more and more, and it's, we're still on the front end of this, and do they lose their ability to shock the markets because we've already repriced this much? And, you know, this is the process of figuring that out, because we're going to get a lot of these. It's like the post-9-11 period, where you had shock value at first, and then it was like, I guess this is the world we're in, and we're going to have to fight through that. And, you know, you can't get around the fact that um, we all know intellectually that this is, this is still going to get worse in terms of the numbers. We just don't know if we've already priced something like and that. And look at how trading goes. We were all down at the open, and then when we reopened uh, after the, uh, the circuit breaker was in 15 minutes, we're essentially down 500 points. It's been most... I follow all the Dow stocks. I don't see any weird gyrations. They're all kind of flatlined immediately. It's like everyone had a, their immediate... had to get what they needed done. It got done, and now we're just sort of sideways. Now, it, it, this could change very quickly, but it goes to your point, Mike, about quickly the market reprices and everybody just kind of calms down for the, for the moment.